Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode in our AEW What If series in TW 2020. I of course am CR Daredevil bringing you all the live action and tonight we are still on the road to Double or Nothing. We've got a lot of storylines progressing here tonight. We also have a couple of big time matches happening tonight. As the main event, we'll feature our world champion pack one on one in a non-title matchup against new member of the House of Truth, Isaiah Cassidy. We also have El Generico versus Jonathan Fought 2 here tonight. We have Chris Statlander versus Mia Yim, as well was set up last week on Dynamite. And we also have Alexis Kaufman defending the AW Women's World Championship as well tonight. So we'll have to see what all ends up happening on this show. But we open up, as usual, with our unofficial Dark, which... I only have to say for a few more months because we will be able to get a TV deal for Dark at that point. Or broadcasting deal, that is. But we open up with the Prisoner's War defeating Tony Deppin and Mansoor, Mansoor in 756 when Blake pinned Deppin with a frog splash. 43 rating for the match, 44 from Blake, 41 from Macklin, 38 from Deppin, 38 from Mansoor. Mansoor. Um, yeah, nice little back and forth match there. Let's see. The more established tag team get the victory over the non-established tag team. Afterwards, 40 rating here. Lost Heat, not worried about it. As the Prisoners of War are celebrating their win when they get interrupted by the best friends who come out and say that uh, that they want a match against them next week on Dynamite. We'll have to see if that ends up happening for sure, but... We may be getting a match between the Best Friends and the Prisoners of War. Now, it doesn't specify whether it's 2-on-2, two 3-on-3, two, three three, just 1-on-1. One one. We don't know for sure, but there's going to be a match next week on Dynamite between all side, between both sides. We'll have to see. Well, at least the challenge has been thrown out there for a match. We'll have to see if it ends up happening. 3,792 people, by the way, in attendance for this show. Then after that, Leva Bates defeats Alice Crawley in 846 by pinfall to superhero kick. 45 from Leva, 33 from Crawley. They have great chemistry with each other, so that's good to see. But 43 rating for the match itself as Bates gets the victory here. After that, Hangman Adam Page has an interview with Andrew Ocampo. Just kind of saying that he may have lost to Adam Cole a few weeks ago on Dynamite, but that things are not done between the duo yet. Uh, 32 rating for this. And that's kind of why I put this on dark. I didn't expect it to do that well. So there is that. Then we have a single matchup. The C's QT Marshall defeat Mag Sedel in 714 by pinfall of the QT Cutter. 39 rating for the match, 37 from QT and 36 from Mike Sedel. They have pretty good chemistry with each other. So that's interesting to see. But QT getting the victory here on dark. Then we have. The Spoiled Brats, we go backstage and we find out that the Spoiled Brats are beating down Tennille Dashwood, leaving her laid out in the back. Of course, you know, two-on-one scenario, so Dashwood may end up having to find, you know, help against them. Of course, that continues that storyline that started back at Fighter Fest that we hadn't really had any continuation of recently because I realized that I'm kind of ignoring a few storylines. That's why we're seeing some progression with them this week. Um, but Spoiled Brats beat her down. And uh, just shout ugh at her before they leave. So not sure what's going on with that still. But And then the main event of Dark Seas, Hikaru Shida. Defeat Charlie Cruel in 755 by pitfall to three count. 44 rating for the match. 54 from Shida. 20 from Cruel. Nice uh, decisive victory for Shida there. We open up Dynamite with our four-way qualifier matchup for the AEW International Championship match at Double or Nothing. And it sees MJF defeat Danhausen, Kip Sabian, and Trevor Lee in 1208. When MJF gets Kip Sabian to, to submit with the Salty Earth after interference from Wardlow. So he can't even win fairly. He has to cheat to win. But he gets a 51 rating. Uh, or the match gets a 51, that is. He gets a 48. 38 from Danhausen, 37 from Kip Sabian, and 55 from Trevor Lee, who seemed off his game. Um, there's a storyline purpose behind Trevor Lee losing, so don't worry. But, uh, but yeah, so MJF getting the victory here, moving on to that match. So if Strickland wants a match with, uh, with MJF at double or nothing, 
he's going to have to either qualify for the, he's going to have to get himself in that ladder match, I guess, at this point, unless the match between those two ends up happening, you know, on dynamite beforehand or whatever. But if he wants a piece of MJ of a double or nothing, he's going to have to qualify for that uh, six way ladder match. We'll have to see if that ends up happening there. But um, yeah, MJF moving on. So now it's Angelico, The Blade, and MJF in the AEW International Championship match at Double or Nothing with three matches left to go, including Johnny Gargano in one of those matches. We don't know which one yet. Before we continue on with the with the show, we go backstage where we find out that John Moxley and Brian Cage are brawling with each other. The two men brawling it out as security comes running and try to break things up between them. Gets 67 here, gains heat for the storyline, as the two cannot seem to be separated. Basically continuing on the brawl from last week uh, on Dynamite. They still can't seem to be separated here tonight, as they are brawling all through the backstage area here at Dynamite. Then after that, 48 rating for this, because they don't seem to click. So brought it down a little bit. But... In a poor matchup, Alexis Kaufman defeats Priscilla Kelly in 11-19 by pinfall to Dazzler to make defense number one of the AEW Women's World Championship. 48 rating for the match, 50 from Kaufman, 36 from Kelly. You may be asking, what did Priscilla Kelly do to earn a title shot? Not really anything. It, it's more just Alexis Kaufman kind of threw out an open challenge, and Kelly's the one that answered it. Uh, but Kaufman gets the victory here. Uh, despite them not clicking, they did get a 48 rating, so that's not too bad. As uh, we did f see as well that the bunny had came out had uh, been kind of watching from a, a darkened part of the kind of stage area, I guess, really. It's, it's kind of like a weird thing. Like she wasn't in the crowd, but she wasn't on the stage. She was kind of in a different weird part of the arena. Um, She's just kind of staring on watching because, of course, she made the challenge to Kaufman last week. She wants a rematch for her women's world champ for what she's saying is her women's world championship. And uh, she's not getting it this week, but she's uh, watching. Watching and waiting, biding her time at this point. Then we get a 41 as Johnny Gargano has a quick interview with Tony Schiavone. He's kind of talking about being here in AEW, uh, enjoying the locker room so far. And looking forward to his in-ring debut, where he will uh, show everyone here in All Elite Wrestling why he is uh, why he's more fit for this kind of style, and why he figures he'll make a bigger impact here than he did anywhere else he's been. Fifty-seven rating for this matchup, as Les Sex Gods defeat the Jurassic Express in eleven thirty. When Sammy Guevara pinned Jungle Boy with 6.30 cent on. During the matchup, we also saw Luchasaurus distract, or we also saw Luchasaurus get distracted by Wardlow. If I had known that MJF was going to have Wardlow interfere to help him win the to help him win the match earlier, um, I probably would have switched it up and had Richard Holiday cause a distraction here. But the idea was that uh, Luchasaurus needed to be the one to get distracted so that Jungle Boy could get pinned. In the matchup here. 57 rating. 46 from Luchasaurus. 54 from Jungle Boy. 46 from Sammy Guevara. And 59 from Chris Jericho. Advancing the storyline of Jurassic Express and Strickland versus the Dynasty. And of course gaining heat for the storyline with Le Sex Gods. Jake Hager. You know just Chris Jericho losing his mind. But they do get another tag team victory. So... In Jericho's mind, as he's celebrating after the match, they got themselves one step closer to getting a, title, a shot at the tag team titles. Then, backstage, another brawl's happening. This time only gets 49, surprisingly enough. As Hangman and Page and Adam Cole are brawling with each other backstage, um, this one comes to an end with, as you see, Dr. Britt Baker. She wasn't technically on screen, but she was there. Um, I didn't get her put on here because I didn't do it as a angle i didn't create my angle, my angle with this but the idea was that baker was able to kind of distract page enough kind of you know maybe hit him long enough for adam cole to get away for cole and baker to escape kind of thing so 49 rating here as clearly things are not done between those two as page mentioned on dark 
Then we get a backstage segment. Only got a 47. But I kind of expected that. I knew that two of the four in this mat in this uh, segment would not do as well as the other two because I rated them all on entertainment. Um, so not a huge deal. But we get three elite standing backstage talking. When Mercedes approaches them, Iwatani and Shirai seem hesitant about her being there, but Hojo kind of, you know, she's like, hey, it's fine. It's fine. Um, Kyrie and Mercedes kind of end up face to face when Mercedes says that Hojo got the best for at Fighter Fest. However, it's been eating at her since, so she wants a rematch with Kyrie. Before Kyrie can answer, Mayu Iwatani steps up and says that, you know, she's gone through, she faced EO. And she faced Kyrie, but she hasn't faced Mayu yet. So Mayu wants a one on one matchup with Mercedes. Then Neo steps up before anything before Kyrie can say anything. And says that if Mercedes wants a rematch, then maybe Eo should have a rematch too. Maybe she feels like uh like she should have beat Mercedes all those weeks ago when they fought one on one. Mercedes then accepts the challenges because she says if that's what she has to do to get a rematch with Kyrie Hojo, then so be it. But she says she has been told by Steven Regal that next week on Dynamite it is going to be herself and two partners that she's going to have to find in six woman tag team action against three elite 47 rating here as that is a match announced for Dynamite next week three elite versus Mercedes and two partners of her choosing then after that Kenny Omega defeats Peter Avalon in 829 by pinfall the one winged angel 65 from Omega, 30 from Avalon, 54 rating for the match itself. Not surprised it was that low, honestly. Hmm. Anyway, Omega gets a pretty decisive victory here over Peter Avalon. After the match, I see us celebrating in the ring. The lights go out in the arena. The commentators wonder what is happening. The lights come back on, and a woman is standing in the ring. One that wrestling fans are familiar with. Omega turns around and gets sprayed with mist to the face by this woman none other than the named by the commentators thea trinidad omega hits the canvas trying to clear his face trying to you know, clear the mist out of his eyes as tommy ends up tommy end appears on the stage trinidad leaves the ring and heads up the ramp to meet him as tommy end gets on the microphone and says that it's time that the fans of all elite wrestling realize that the elite are not who they claim to be they are not elite they are inferior, inferior to the Dark Order. The Dark Order's music hits and 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 uh, Trinidad and and head to the back as officials are trying to help clear Omega's eyes. So, a new member of the AEW roster, the Trinidad, who was surprisingly let go by AEW, by uh, WWE. I I don't know why, but she was let go by them. So, I was like, okay, um, they're. Thea and Tommy are technically not officially together in this save. Like, they're not dating, but they kind of were at this point. So I'm not. I'm kind of surprised why they... Or at least they were right about this time. Um, so I'm kind of surprised that they that it wasn't put in the mod, but I figured it would be smart to have Trinidad come in, and she's going to be kind of like a, a manager for End and a uh, wrestler as well. So now the, the Dark Order is four men and three women. So the Dark Order just keeps getting bigger. Keeps getting bigger. Um, whether that's, you know, but don't worry. It's not like it's, you know, it's not like it's going to be like the NWO where it gets out of control with how many members are part of it or anything like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we'll have to see what happens there. Um, we'll also see, I have to see if, uh, Thea ends up in the ring at some point. This gets 49. She debuts her accolade gimmick, which gets an adequate rating. Well, I'll see you for the storyline, but that's fine. I can make that up. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. She does have an extremely marketable gimmick that will sell far more, far more merchandise than usual. And it gives her a large boost of star quality during matches and angles, so that's really helpful for her. So there you go. Then after that, God, I'm just finding all these bad chemistry uh, in opponents t tonight. As in a 42 rated matchup, Medium defeats Chris Statlander in 1052 by pinfall package pile driver. Uh, during the matchup, Medium was going to cheat when. Alexis Kaufman, stats friend, came out um, and uh, looked like she was going to hit. Like she she pulled a chair away from uh, Mia Yim 
which caused enough of a distraction. A roll up, one, two, me and him kicked out. And uh, as Kaufman was was uh, up on the apron, um, me and him ends up sending Statlater into Kaufman, who was accidentally hit by Kaufman's AEW Women's World Championship in the process. That caused her to stagger uh, away from the ropes and get caught with package pile driver for a three count. 42 rating here. Me and with 42, Chris Statlander 35. They didn't seem to click, so the match ratings would have been, or the in ring performances and the match rating itself would have been better if they didn't have the bad chemistry there. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So Me and defeats Chris Statlander. Afterwards, she's celebrating while Stat clearly leaves, or leaves the ring clearly frustrated by what just happened. Kaufman's trying to apologize for accidentally his, hitting Statlander with the Women's World Championship, trying to explain that she was just trying to keep me him from interfering, from uh, cheating and all that stuff. But Statlander, not really having any of it. She's frustrated. She wanted to win this matchup um, in honor of her friend who's currently out right now, Martina. And she walks off with Kaufman following after her while looking back at Miriam, who's mouthing, who's still mouthing off in celebration. 52 rating here as a... Uh, Gain see for the storyline. So there you go. We have Statlander who wants a shot at the Women's World title. We have the Bunny who still wants her Women's World Championship back. And now we have Mia Yim who picked up a victory over Chris Statlander here and who might have some issues with Alexa Kaufman as well. So maybe Alexis has uh, got a little bit of a full plate when it comes to her Women's World Championship. We'll have to see what ends up happening. But 52 rating here for that. And we get 61 rating for this matchup. Which got the crowd hotter, which is good to see. As in a decent matchup, 1323, Jonathan Fatu defeats El Generico by pinfall the Superfly Splash. 59 from Fatu, 57 from Generico. Good back and forth matchup between these two that, uh, yeah, did a lot of good work there. Got a 61. I'll take that. Um, great back and forth matchup that saw Fatu get the victory. Afterwards, after the match, Fatu then hits another, hits a super kick on Generico. He hit one earlier in the, in the match, so we're hit, saying he hit another. Uh, before continuing to beat him down, Fatu leaves the ring to grab a chair, but familiar music hits, bringing the crowd to their feet. As Cody Rhodes comes running out with a chair of his own, chasing Fatu off into the crowd. Rhodes yells at Fatu to come back to the ring, but Fatu just kind of blankly stares at him before turning and walking away. And Rhodes checks on Generico as the commentators wonder what Jonathan Fatu is doing. Why is he walking away from a fight with Cody Rhodes? So, 55 rating here. We'll have to see for the storyline. Man, it is a lot of losing heat and, and bad chemistry in this episode of Dynamite, but that's all right. Um, yeah, we're advancing that storyline there, but Cody Rhodes uh, chasing off Fatu here, and we'll have to see what's next in that storyline there. Then, we get a backstage segment. Which got a 67 rating and is still lost heat for the storyline. That's how hot that's the world title storyline is right now. <laughs> this is uh, the House of Truth out of audio range preparing Isaiah Cassidy for tonight's main event. Uh, Lethal seems to be telling him some sort of strategy. If the commentators wonder if the goal for Cassidy is to get a victory tonight or simply to hurt Pack before the eventual world title match against Jay Lethal. The main event gets an 80 rating. My God. It's Pack defeats Isaiah Cassidy in 944 by pinfall the Kirks through shooting star press. Um, yeah, pretty good match there. 49 from Cassidy, 88 from Pack. Good lord, Pack is one of the best in-ring performers we've got. And that's and the segment rating was capped due to this first short match length. So the match actually would have that rating actually would have been higher if it had been a longer matchup. Um the reason why I didn't do, do it as a longer match is because the game was already yelling at me as it was about how much I was using Isaiah Cassidy. Because, spoiler alert, as you can see there, uh, there's another segment after this. Um, and so I didn't want to overexpose him and then have the game yell at me for overusing him. But, uh, yeah, pretty good matchup there. As Pac gets the victory. Cassidy, you know, had a little bit of offense in it, but Pac gets a clean victory here over a member of the House of Truth. Afterwards. Lethal and Mark Quinn hit the ring to attack Pack. It ends up being a 3-on-1 beatdown until Penta and Fenix come running out to chase them off. Penta and Fenix are checking on Pack while Lethal yells at him, yells at them as Dynamite comes to an end. Hey, it's good to know that Mark Quinn and Truth Martini are a good pairing as well. 58 rating here, which is kind of surprising, but whatever. 
Um, but there you go. Of course, remember the House of Truth promo last week said that uh, Private Party were going to take care of the Lucha Bros. And now the Lucha Bros are coming out to fight off Private Party and Lethal. So we may end up having to see a tag team match in the near future as well. We'll see. But 58 here. Dynamite itself gets 71. It's all because of that main event. There are a couple of good segments in the show. They got like 60-something, but it's definitely because of that 80 rate of main event. Increase our popular in 47 regions. So not everywhere, not in the in America, because I think we're kind of at that point in America, and like in the main portions of America, or the main portions of the United States, that is, where that doesn't gain us that much popularity, but we still had a lot of popularity everywhere else. So I can't complain about that. So there you go. We have some interesting stuff this week. Um, some matches that didn't do as hot as I was expecting. Some segments that didn't do as hot as I was expecting. But, thankfully, our world champion saved the day with a hell of a performance in the main event. And uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to see what's next for House of Truth and the Death Triangle. Whether it's a singles matchup, a tag match... Some variation of that, we'll have to see. Just waiting for this to load, but yeah. Next week on Dynamite, six-woman tag team matchup. Three Lee against Mercedes and two of her partners. And we'll have to see, you know, another. we'll see another four-way matchup to qualify for the AEW International Championship match at Double or Nothing. And we'll have to see what else ends up happening on the show. Dynamite, top story of the night. Feedback's been great. Drawn a lot of praise. Good to see there. Um, ratings for the night. 479,000 people watching Dynamite. 71 rating. NXT had a 48 rating. 756,000. So that's less than 300,000. So we're closing the gap. And it's actually about 280,000 difference. So we're kind of closing the gap there. NXT had Candice LeRae and Chelsea Green main event, which is kind of cool. Although they definitely would have been saved by having that uh, that semi-main event be the main event. But, you know, it's cool to see that uh, they're trying to give the women a chance. So there's that there. Uh, speaking of NXT, they're in crisis. They fell to small size. So there's that. They fell to small size there. Uh, Raul Mendoza resign, trying to resign. Sunil Singh staying with them. But yeah, some success there from... Dynamite as we uh, we continue to roll. We continue to have some really good shows happening and all of that. Crazy enough, just to show you how good Pack is for us right now, um, not only is he now officially in every single one of the top five matches of all time, but he carried Isaiah Cassidy to the second best match of all time in our save. <laughs> so he is absolutely killing it. And on top of that, he's actually in eight no, seven of the top ten. My God. My God. Um, yeah, good stuff there. This uh, episode of Dynamite ended up ninth all-time. Or, sorry, sixth all-time. It's the 71 there. Um, attendances, we're still getting up there. Our high, We're still continuing to break our, our high Dynamite attendances every week. As this episode had the most people watching or most people in attendance for it and it continues to get the highest tv ratings as this actually had the most viewers of any episode of dynamite so far as well so we are continuing to grow even if it is a little bit of a slow build we are continuing to grow there for sure and all of that also i just noticed that i was mistaken in what i said we did gain popularity in america because we apparently have no coverage in England. I didn't realize that until I went to go look at this. We have no coverage in England. So I got to figure that out. I don't know if we lost a broadcasting deal somewhere in there or what happened there. But uh, I got to make sure I look at that. See if we can get a broadcast. See if we can get some TV deal for England. Nevertheless, that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And in this series, we will see you next week for another episode of Dynamite. And on the channel, we'll see you tomorrow for yet another video.